Hey guys, it's Dave from The Brain Bulwark. I just wanted to bring you this presentation about sleep deprivation and how we can avoid it, basically. So I put a little bit of my personal opinion on this first slide. I do think it's one of the more crippling and common cognitive impairments that we face today, but I'll leave that up to you after we go over a few things. So first I just want to cover the extent of how debilitating this condition can be. These are some of the common side effects people experience from sleep deprivation. Obviously, some are more significant and easily to, easier to recognize than others. But I just want to cover what most research agrees on. So first, we have impaired attention and working memory. So when you are sleep deprived, your productivity will shoot down into the ground. You may not even recognize it because you've probably been sleep deprived for so long and you've become desensitized. But the fact of the matter is, you could increase your productivity exponentially by increasing your sleep. There's also some research that's shown it affects long-term memory and decision-making. Obviously, decision-making, uh, it's a little harder to, to test uh, objectively because it's a rather subjective uh, field of cognitive uh, abilities. But the long-term memory is a little more... Uh, black and white to research. So those two are a little more affected by something called partial sleep deprivation where you're getting sleep, you're not completely deprived, but it's not adequate. So you're, in other words, you're not getting a full night's rest, whatever that is for you. Uh, another paper or two that I read did mention the fact that people's inherent motivation can lead them to just sort of drive through these side effects without really noticing it because they're just so abundantly motivated. But sooner or later, sleep deprivation will catch up to you and it can get to the point where it actually affects your motivation, which uh, should be avoided at all costs because that really will just bring everything to a halt, whatever you're trying to attain. And destab destabilization of your wake state... This was just something I read that I thought was kind of interesting and I'm sure most people can relate to. Uh, it's basically, I think of the times when I'm driving home and I start to doze off a little bit and before I know it, I'm fully aware, I'm conscious again and I'm behind the wheel and I realize, wow, you know, that was dangerous, I'm not sleeping enough. So when you reach that point, you are sleep deprived. This is another thing that I thought was interesting that I wanted to bring to the forefront of this slide, and I think it's worth mentioning. Not only do you have the side effects that we just went over, but you're also losing out on the potential benefits of sleeping adequately. And there's a laundry list of benefits. I'll go over a few in uh, some, some further slides. But losing out on these benefits, one could argue is just as detrimental as the side effects from not sleeping. So there was a paper, I linked the journal right here, uh, and it gave a great analogy to try and uh, elaborate and clarify this concept of losing sleep benefits. So if we were to think of sleep as an object as simple as money, and you were given two options, you can either invest this money into a bank where it's safe, relatively speaking, and accruing interest over time. Or option B, you can give it away, which is basically what you're doing when you're not going to bed on time. So in option A, first, you have your money. And second, you're gaining interest over time. That's an arguab arguably ideal situation. Option B, not only have you given up your money, but you've also given up your ability to gain interest. So this is what we talk about when you're losing the sleep benefits. And that really makes this a, a compound uh, adverse side effect. So here it's just broken down into three points. I just want to make it a little more digestible for any of you who, who uh, 
prefer things to be simplified. Sleep deprivation has a direct effect on your ability to perform cognitively demanding tasks. I put sleep here because you don't always have to be deprived. If you're getting sleep, it can just as much have a good benefit. So when we talk about cognitively demanding tasks, it's remembering, concentrating, focusing on any given task. Basically, anything you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is involving your cognition. So here we have a few ways to avoid or reduce poor sleep. First off, since the course is largely based around nootropics, we're going to want to dose them earlier in the day, especially if we're incorporating some sort of stimulant, caffeine, L-theanine. Uh, some people might even be using 1,3-dimethylamylamine. And we're going to want to keep those stimulants earlier just so that the half-life has time to wear off before we're trying to go to sleep. Uh, the second point is some of the more common advice given just to kind of create a quiet, dark, and cool uh, bedroom just to allow yourself to wind down. Number three is something we would call pre-bed rituals. So this is where a lot of people either read a book, or watch some television, uh, pray or meditate or something just to allow yourself to calm down from the day's worth of work. And number four kind of ties into number three, but it's just sort of to reiterate the concept of just letting your day end. You're not letting your work or any other issues haunt you to the point of getting in the way of that much needed sleep. And number five is one that I personally prioritize, and that's just overall consistency. The four basic steps are so easy that they can be hard. And consistency allows you to really tie them in to the point where they're second nature and they no longer require effort. So let's go over some of these benefits we've been talking about. Alright, so some of the, the more obvious benefits would be uh, energy, uh, both physically and mental. And here's one benefit that I wanted to touch upon that's a little less common. And it's it's not fully supported by research, but it is a pretty uh, sound hypothesis that's being proposed in the field. And this basically suggests that in our day-to-day -day tasks, our brain is receiving some sort of stimuli which would be information in the, in the case of memory. And it's encoding this in our hippocampus. And this is the area of the brain that's involved with memory and navigation of information. Then you go to sleep at night. And this slow wave activity while you're sleeping allows this part of the brain to replay it. And this strengthens those neural networks between the neocortex and the hippocampus. So moving forward, since those neural, the connections, we call them neural networks, the connections that have that memory encoded on them have been strengthened. And this lets future recollection of that memory become a much more feasible thing. So this is what we would call memory consolidation, to simplify it. And basically, as I put here in a much more digestible manner, it's reinforcing those pathways and information that you've interpreted, digested, and been exposed to throughout the day. And it's allowing them to become readily accessible in the future. So with that in mind, you can see how sleep deprivation not only affects the obvious things like energy, uh, your health, your physical health, your mental health, but also such pivotal aspects of cognition like forming memories and that's why we focus on it so much at the brain bulwark home study course and this is just one aspect of productivity that we like to cover there's a lot of others like meditation nutrition exercise and obviously the core of it is nootropics but i like to cover all aspects just to really create a, a solid foundation and of course i offer all this material for free and you can get updates on every time I produce more content. Just join the newsletter right here. I linked it to you. And I look forward to hearing uh, some feedback. Thank you.